The Lord said, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. You will call upon me and I will answer you. And I will lead you back, lead back all your captives from every place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. And let's now acknowledge our sins so that we may worthily proclaim, we may worthily celebrate these holy sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good, not evil, all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. You will see, may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul, St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then a sudden disaster will come upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in the darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For you are all children of the light, and children of the day. We are not of the night or the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay awake, alert, and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told this, his disciples this parable. A man was going on a journey, and he called his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received 5,000 talents came forward and bringing the additional five. And he said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I've made five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant, since you were faithful in small matters. You, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. The one who had received the two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew that you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant, gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent on the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I uh, harvest where I don't plant and you gather where I did not scatter? Should you not then at least have put my money in the bank so I could have gotten it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For everyone who has, more will be given him and he'll grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of the Gospel cleanse us from our sins. Well, yet another difficult parable. <laughs> a parable about accounting and judgment. And... Um, we see that, uh, there, you know, we, we, we know from this gospel, we just heard about the three different ones. Now, two of them seem to have a good relationship with the master. They trust him. They take risks. They're willing to take risks, even with his money. And um, he, um, they, they, I think somewhere in the depths of their being, they think, well, he's a reasonable man. And even if I were to make a loss, at least he'd give me some credit for trying to, to, to gain, to gain uh, something with his money. So he'll be happy that I, I tried. So I, that's my thinking. In other words, you, you know, I, we have to presume what's going on in their mind. But clearly they saw him as a reasonable man so that they were willing uh, to take risk with him. But you'll notice that this third man, he says to him, now listen to how he describes the master. He sees the master very differently than the other two. It says here, I know that you're a hard and a demanding person that you harvest where you did not plant, and you gather where you did not scatter. Now, brothers and sisters, first of all, see for how, how different that is, right? But notice, too, it's a lie. It is a lie. Because the master does not harvest where he did not plant, uh, and he does, he does not gather where he did not scatter seed. It's all his land. This is his, this is his treasure. So it's a total lie, complete pack of lies. It's, that he's saying to, the, to him. So he's, he's engaging in, a, in, in not only a, 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 an angry and fearful discourse with, with this man, but he's, he's also just simply lying. Uh, everything, you see, remember, let's always remember, everything we call our own really belongs to God. And so God never harvests where he does not plant, and he never gathers where he did not scatter. It's all his, and whatever seed we scatter, he first gives it to us to scatter it. So this is uh, the first thing that we see. This man is locked in error. He's locked in anger. He sees God as a competitor. He sees him as someone he wants to avoid. He sees him as a troubling, demanding person rather than a father who loves him or w wishes him well and actually even entrusts things into his care. He does not see God this way at all. Now, it's interesting the way the master replies. He said, so you knew where I 
that I harvest where I did not plant, and you gather where I did not scatter? Now, there's a question mark at the end of that. It's not a statement, it's a question. So the word knew, as in K-N-E-W, so in other words, to know or you knew. Remember, I've tried to say this to you many times before. To talk about knowing in the Bible is more than intellectual knowing, it's experiential knowing. Hmm? So in other words, you can almost use the word experience rather than know, and you're getting more to the heart of it. So you've experienced that I'm a hard man, that I harvest where I didn't sow, or, or a plant where I, I gather where I didn't scatter seed? Are you, you, that's how you see me? Well, look, if you, don't, uh, if you don't want to deal with me, you don't have to. Um, consider yourself dismissed. Now, give, give me back that talent, I'll, I'll give it to the one with ten. Now, we'll get to that in a minute, but you see again, and I've, I've said to you over and over again in these series of parables, Judgment Day is not just about, it's not about a mean God who doesn't want us, it's about what we want. How do we see God? How do we experience Him as a loving Father who deserves our praise and our love, our admiration, our respect, our gratitude? Or do we see Him as some kind of a competitor, someone that we don't like, He's passing rules, he's, you know, he's demanding, He harvests where He didn't plant, and do we see Him that way? That's a miserable person to have to go and live with for all eternity. And if that's the way a person sees Him, God's not going to say, I'm going to force you to live in my presence forever with your mistaken notions about me. You don't have you don't have to live with me. That's not who I am. I don't have to defend myself to you. Everything, everything you had was what I gave you. Everything. How can you say that? It's a complete lie. He doesn't even try to defend himself, the Lord doesn't. He just says, look, if that's the way you see me and that's the way you want it to be and you don't want to have anything to do with me uh, and you just want me to basically leave you alone, fine. Give me back the one talent and I'll give it to someone else and you can consider yourself dismissed. See? Now, again, there's, there is this thing that we, the Lord does add here. Throw this useless servant outside into the darkness where there'll be wailing and grinding of teeth, you see. So there is a kind of a, an anger that the Lord permits uh, here uh, to be seen. But, you know, I almost wonder if it isn't a hurt. Now, when I say hurt, I'm putting it in quotes. God does not experience passions like we do. But, you know, I think on Judgment Day, the wailing and the grinding of teeth, the sorrow, the sadness, the tears, aren't just on the part of somebody who departs, but maybe on the part of the Lord himself. You know, he, he came to Jerusalem one day, and he saw the city for the last time, and he wept. He wept over Jerusalem. It's a kind of a, you know, he didn't, he didn't, it wasn't glib about the fact that Jerusalem was heading in a direction that would lead to her destruction. He wanted her to turn to him and have faith and save her. And so he wept. Now, can God weep? Well, we say in the classic theology that God doesn't have passions like we do, but the scriptures say he does. And I don't want to put them in opposition, but I want to say that there's something in God that when he wants to spend eternity with you or me, and we say, I don't want you, you're just a troublemaker, you're just, you're just in my face, and I don't want anything to do with you, that that's got to cause, at least in some sense, however God experiences it, some kind of pain, some kind of sorrow. So, again, um, this outer darkness is where people go who don't want to live with God. And there is ultimately wailing and grinding of teeth, but as you've heard me say over and over again, the saddest thing about the souls in hell is they'd be even more miserable in heaven. Now, to a couple of other points in this parable that sort of irk some of us modern people, First of all, why does he give different amounts to each of them? We all of it, get it that, and get it that. We want everything to be equal, you know. Um, um, but it isn't. It isn't. We all come, we're born into this world with different gifts and talents and also some deficits and some struggles. I got an obesity gene, you know, <laughs> among other things. But uh, you say, oh, Father, it has, it's just because you eat too much. Okay, well, all right. And, but you know what I'm saying, we all get dealt a different set of cards, body types and skin color, all the things, but we also have, my brothers were both great at math, I wasn't, but I was more the writer, I was more the, uh, the philosopher, and um, I was a late bloomer, they, they, they got straight A's, I got C's and B's, <laughs> and uh, sometimes a D or an F, but uh, I, I bloomed late, uh, but I, 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 I caught up, but, but again, we all have, we come into this world with just different different qualities and tests, I mean, tests that we have to go through, but also we, uh, we all get different, dealt a different hand of cards with some good cards and some cards we'd rather we didn't have, and just, that's just life. 
And she wasn't fair. Well, too bad. You know, don't ask God to be fair with you, because if he's fair, you're in trouble. What you want is for God to be merciful to you, see? You want God's grace and his mercy. And you know, even the struggles, I will say it's sort of for me, good that I was a late bloomer academically, because I had to work really hard to get a C, and extremely hard to get a B, back in elementary and junior high and even into high school. But all of a sudden, my, my senior year of high school and into college, I got mostly A's. Maybe because I'd learned to work hard, and it gave me a lot of good work habits. So even my sufferings were somehow a blessing. But I just want you to see that why does one receive five talents, the other two, and the other one? Well, it says here, each according to their ability. Now, ability doesn't just mean, you know, ability isn't just something you can say, we all have to be good in just this. I mean, some are good at sports. Some are good at math. Some are good at administration. Some are good at organization. Some are good at parenting. You know, so you see the idea. It isn't just to, to each according to his ability as if we only have one ability, all of us. No. Um, but they have different abilities, and they get different amounts that correspond to, to what they can reasonably do with it. And that just makes sense. So I think we've got to get over this idea that, you know, everything to, that, that, um, that equality means the same. Uh, men and women are different, even though they're equal in dignity. Vive la différence, right? Um, and so we, we have um, ethnic and racial diversities, you know, we're all equal in dignity, but vive la différence, huh? So there, there, there are differences, but there's equal, equal equality and dignity, but differences in skills and, and in gifts and, and in history and just all of that. All right. So that I want to just take care of that part. Now, this, the last part here at the end of the gospel, there's one other difficulty to deal with. It says here to, uh, it says, now take the talent from him who has the one and give it to the one with the ten. For, and, it, and it says here, for to everyone who has, more will be given and he'll grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what little he has will be taken away. Now, you, you know, if you hear that in economic terms, you're thinking with the flesh. You're thinking with the world. Jesus is not talking about money here. Uh, this is not the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. This is not some fatalistic, horrifying economic injustice. What this means is that who receives more? Those who use the gifts they have well. And the Lord says, see, I will not put you in charge of more things. I can trust you with small things. And now I can put you in charge of greater things. This is about grace. This is about our response to God's mercy and his grace. And if we want more grace, then use well the graces you have now. Well, come I don't have more. You, what, what are you doing with what you have now is the question, you see? So again, please do not see this in economic terms. It is not an economic thing. It is about grace. Um, who, you know, the, um, there's an old, I think, song that says, um, you must be faithful in a few things to be ruler over many. Hmm? And one day we pray that God will say, well done, good, fa good and faithful servant. Well done, well done. But again, sometimes if you think, why isn't God giving me more of some grace? Or why doesn't he, for example, I need a financial blessing, Lord. Please help me. We all know about money. Um, but the Lord said, well, how are you using the money you do have? Can I, can I trust you with money? You know, it's hard for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. What would you use the money for? I see that your credit card is maxed up, but what have you been spending it on, you know? Are you spending it on real essential things, or are you spending it on that stuff you really don't need and can't afford? You know, can I really trust you with money? So you see, when we say, God, give me more money, bless my, give me a financial blessing, we better check, well, how am I using the, what, what I do have? And money's a good example because we all understand it, but maybe we want more patience, or we want the Lord to relieve us from anger. Or, but what, what are we doing to grow in love? What are we doing with the gifts he does give us, you see? So I would simply say for all of us, the Lord is saying, I want to bless you with more. But what I'm looking for is that I can trust you with blessings. Because if, if I just give you blessings and I can't trust you, Lord knows you might just go bury the thing. Or you might use it, but you grow in pride. Who knows what will happen to you? How are you responding to the graces and the blessings you have even now? All right, so there's a pretty fearsome parable, again, another judgment parable, but at the end of the day, there's lots of teachings for us about now. We want to see that there's this um, reckoning that we must one day make for God for what we've done with what he's offered us, and let's pray that we've used it well. Now, are you going to be like these two men that say, not the master here, but God is a, reason, God is a reasonable God. He's a good God. He loves me. He's put things in my disposal. He wants me to use them. And if I take risk and I fail, but what he does ask is that I be faithful and he'll, he'll be good to me. So 
So I'm going to step out. I'm going to use him. I'm going to love him. I'm going to trust him. He's reasonable and he's good and he's merciful. And one day I'll stand before him and say, I did the very best I could with what you gave me. And we'll admit some of our failings as well. But at the end of the day, he'll bless us if we've been faithful. Or you're going to be like this other guy. I don't like to be told what to do. I don't like this God thing. I don't want to have to account to him. I can do what I please with what I got. In fact, I don't even want to hear from him. Don't even give me anything. Just leave me alone. If you're going to be like that, God will respect, okay, that's your decision. Um, He will leave you alone. That's never a good day. Never a good day. So, Lord, help us to love you and trust you and help us to reach out to you. And please, Lord, please keep us faithful to death. And help us to know always that whatever we may at times emotionally experience, you're our loving Father. You're reasonable. You give us gifts, and you want us to use them. And you'll be good to us if we've done our very best. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was conceived, was incarnated of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, give us um, an outpouring of filial love and charity for you so that deep in our heart there will be a love, an appreciation, a gratitude, and a joy for you that will free us to use wisely the gifts you've given us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for family, friends, and relatives, especially those who may have drifted from the faith, and need to return to the church and the sacraments. We ask you, Lord, please, as if by miracle, return them to us and help us to know what to do to encourage them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, for the uh, sick and the suffering, for the dying, for those also who struggle with any other uh, difficulties, such as health or finances or grief or loss. Lord, for all who suffer, grant your grace, your peace, your life, your mercy and your love, and bring them healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, for all the souls of the faithful departed in this month of November particularly, we pray. We ask also, Lord, that you may in every way um, wipe every tear from their eyes and welcome them quickly to the kingdom of heaven. And also, too, Lord, we ask you to look into our hearts now and here and answer all of our other many prayers in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread that we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Mysterium. Eus efficer divinitatis consortis, qui humanitatis nostri, fieri dignatus as particeps. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Spiritu humilitatis et in animo contrito, sushi per ati domine, sic sacrificium nostrum in conspecto to hodie, uplate tibi domini Deus. Lava me domine, ab iniquitati mea, Era peccato meo, munda me. Please pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice in my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and for good of all his holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and we move and we have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now we possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. So with all the angels and the saints, we praise you, as with joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, 
You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, custodiet anima meam in vita materna. To be near God is my happiness. To place my hope in God is to place my hope in God, the Lord. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of Him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a word of greeting again to those who are still at home and maybe not able to get out or get to mass here personally. That's why we. We do these masses, and I hope you'll find them helpful. Um, I want you to know that uh, we have some envelopes here on the, um, on the altar, and a number, good number of them. We're uh, going to be praying for the names of all those who have died, um, and you can uh, do the same. Pray for your loved ones who have gone before you. It's the month of November, the month of all souls, and we pray for them. We also have our memory board and the relics of the saints, and so we, in the autumn, we, as we see the leaves kind of falling, <laughs> we, uh, we see that uh, we, we think of the, the fall or the autumn of our own life when the leaves begin to fall. And um, one day, too, uh, we will be called from this world. So we entrust the dead who've gone before us, and we remember that one day, too, soon enough, we'll, we'll pass from this life. So it's that time of the year where we, we keep that in mind. Advent's also coming soon. We'll have a Thanksgiving Mass also on Wednesday just before Thanksgiving. So some of those things are going on also ask you to, uh, to you know, we, we send the bulletin out. Hopefully you're getting it at home. If not, send us your email or we'll mail it to you. Um, any number of other ways to stay connected to the parish, please. Uh, anything we can do to help you to stay connected. If you need a call from me, <laughs> I'm trying to make calls out to some of you, but if you need a call from me, just say, tell that priest to call me and I'll, I'll, I'll pick up the phone and certainly do that. The Lord be with you and may almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go in peace. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>